invited a, a friend or, or relative or somebody to our church and, and uh, that I let them down because I didn't say what I sometimes say. I didn't realize I do this that often. I do it on the radio every night. But uh, for anybody here that wants to pass it on, when we say Bible, here at Glenwood Baptist Church, we're only making reference to one book. Amen. I'm not even talking about the inspired original no. when I say Bible. When we say Bible here at Glenwood Baptist Church, we're talking about this King James Amen. 1611 authorized version Amen. Bible. Amen. Commonly referred to as the King James Version, this is God's infallible, inerrant, and inspired word. Amen. This book to the exclusion of all others, is God's pure, perfect, and preserved word. Amen. Matter of fact, if it ain't King James, it ain't Bible at all. Right. It's just one of Satan's counterfeits. Yeah. So that's just in case any of y'all thought maybe I was preaching from an NIV. <laughs> Hebrews chapter 5, we're just going to read a few verses, beginning at verse 11. Would you stand with me, please, in reverence for the reading of these scriptures. Hebrews chapter 5, verse 11. You young people, thank you for being here. But I would like to ask you to set a good example for the older people. By number one, staying awake. Amen. Some of our older people may have problems, but if you'll, if you'll sit up erect, you know, and attentive, maybe that'll encourage some of our older people to stay awake. Then number two, if you will, pay attention and try not to be talking and moving about as much as you can help it. I realize sometimes, you know, you just uh, you just can't help, but you got to move. We had this fellow in the church my wife and I were in before I got in the pastor. He he claimed that he got saved as a result of moving in church. And what happened was, is during the invitation, he just felt like his little boy. He just felt like he had to go to the restaurant. Well, his daddy had really been restricting him for doing anything distracting in church. And uh, his daddy looked over him as a boy was moving around, you know how little boys would do. And the little boy started to head over to the restroom, which was to the side, you may remember. Mm -hmm. His daddy said, boy, where are you going? Mm -hmm. And he forgot, you know, his daddy had threatened him. He said, I'm going forward to get saved. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's one of those Atkinson boys. Yeah. And sure enough, he claims, he claims that the fear of God got to hold him. <laughs> he claims that he got saved as a result of that. I don't know. All right, Hebrews chapter 5, verse 11. Of whom we have many things to say, and hard to be uttered, seeing ye are dull of hearing. For when for the time you ought to be teachers, you have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God and to become such as have need of milk and not of strong meat. For everyone that useth milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. But strong meat belongeth to them that are of full age, even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. Our text verse, will be verse 13. For everyone that uses milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. Will you bow your heads and hearts with me for prayer? Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who died for our sins according to the scriptures, was buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. We're thankful for the gift of God, eternal life, available to any and every sinner through faith in Jesus Christ and his shed blood. I thank you for saved people gathered together here today. I pray that they might be fed and strengthened. I pray they might be encouraged, comforted, corrected where we need it. Lord, I pray that during the invitation time, after the message is over, that there will be a spirit of yieldedness and surrender as we don't just be hearers of the word, but doers and respond as you would have us to. 
Even now we pray, speak, Lord, thy servant heareth. Even now we pray, what would thou have me to do? And Lord, I pray that the Holy Spirit would work in Jesus' name. Amen. Won't you be seated, please? The Bible says in another place in the book of Hebrews that people have not been profited who have been occupied with the meats. You'll find that over in Hebrews chapter 13. In other words, what establishes the heart is grace. And what will establish your Christian life in heaven are practicing the basics. I promise you. That's the truth about most disciplines of life, most occupations, most hobbies, most skills. If you want to excel in something, the rule is you practice the basics. If you practice the basics enough times, you'll get good. Yep. If you practice the basics enough time, you'll be able to profit more when you do mess with the meat. But if you make up your mind, all you're going to occupy yourself with is meat. You're going to be in a mess. Yeah. But some people are not qualified to understand or handle meat. Yeah. We, uh, we have some of you that perhaps uh, you've been, I think Brother Lonnie Harrison might be one of them, that has had, that had uh, instead of milk in his, uh, in his bottle, I think Lonnie Harrison had... Uh, Tabasco sauce or Louisiana sauce or some kind of hot sauce in his in his body. Maybe that's true of you, but the average person has to progress to be able to handle a sirloin steak. Okay? Not many people have sirloin steak and cut it up into pieces and load it down with steak sauce when they're three months old. Okay, they don't do it. There comes a time when you're qualified and able. And there comes a time where Christian people ought to be able to be teachers. Amen. There comes a time when Christian people ought to be able to not have to be uh, visited over and over and over yeah. just to get them to go to church. Yeah. There comes a time when nobody should have to... Uh, have some kind of a stewardship campaign campaign to convince you that Christians ought to be tithing. Right. There comes a time in your Christian life when nobody should wonder if you'll ever show up for soul winning visitation. Yeah. But you just show up because it's the right thing to do. But many Christians, I'd say probably most Christians, are like these people here in Hebrews chapter 5. For when the time you ought to be teachers, you have need to go and teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God. Amen. I want to talk to you today about toad frogs. <laughs> this morning, I noticed that our water fountain out in front of the house was kind of drying up as I get ready to get my truck. And so I shot some water in it from the hose real quick, tried to fill it up a little bit, and I saw the smallest lizard I've seen since I've been to Florida. I mean, he was almost microscopic. Have y'all seen some of these real teeny little lizards? I mean, he's really, really teeny. And then uh, there are frogs that sometimes you can't hardly see them because they're not very big, but they sure do make a lot of racket. There's all kinds of frogs, and I'm not a frog expert. But I'm told that toad frogs are a particular kind of frog that don't require or don't enjoy as much water as your regular frog will. In other words, they may not be one that you'll find all the time out in the water, you know, just with their eyes sticking up. Y'all seen some of them, right? with their eyes sticking up. Sometimes it's hard to tell whether you're looking at a frog or a snake or a turtle with those eyes sticking up. And uh, a, a toad, he may uh, go out near the water, but he don't submerge himself in the water all the time. He's, uh, he's just kind of there where he gets to it and just sit. Okay? <laughs> yeah. 
I've been practicing this because I was so afraid that if I did it, that I might get down and not be able to get up. And I had to call for five of our men. So, okay, would you help me get back up? And you know, many Christians never really get into it. Many Christians spend years of their lives knowing they're saved, knowing they're in a good church. But that's about all that they can get themselves to do is just show up ever so often. Maybe they've gotten in a habit where they come every Sunday morning. Yeah. Maybe for them, a habit is coming the first Sunday of every month. I don't know. Yeah. But uh, maybe they've got the habit of coming a little bit more than that. And they've gotten used to the songs and all. But the truth is, they really are not really in there. Yeah. And so they don't have a clue as to what happens on Sunday night. That's right. Amen. Not a clue. Folks, do you know we have some real enjoyable services on Sunday night? Amen. 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 I have managed to secure a singing group Amen. that shows up every Sunday night. Amen. And I may tell you, they are special. Yes. Amen. You need to be here. Yep. Some people won't have a clue about what happens on Wednesday nights. Right. Guess what? We have prayer request time on Wednesday night. Amen. And this Wednesday night, we're going to have a missionary, God willing, driving this one as well, driving a little over 300 miles wow. to come to be with us. And because of right now he's working a full-time job, after the service, he's going to turn around and drive 300 miles back. Oh we'll try to be nice to him. Yeah. Amen. I hope you'll listen. <laughs> <laughs> I hope I don't forget. Last, last time, I almost forgot to get the guy the offering. And uh, I had to call him up after I got back to the house. Yeah. I said, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> he hadn't left yet. He's still fooling around here at the church. Probably waiting on me to show up. Yeah. <laughs> How far out in the water does a toad frog go? Come on, Adlin, answer this for me. How far out in the water does a toad frog go? Knee deep. Knee deep. <laughs> Knee deep. <laughs> and that's the way most Christians are. Come on, you you said it before in your days when you was a kid and you were swimming. I swam in a place called Flat Rock Park out of Columbus, Georgia. And uh, that's where I learned to procrastinate. My earliest times of procrastination. And as I remember, I did not want to get out of that water. Yeah. I enjoyed it so much. Everything was made like out of granite. Anybody been up to Flat Rock Park around Columbus? But everything was made like out of granite. And they had made somehow a, a swimming area. And as a little boy, I loved it. Oh, I enjoyed it. I jumped in that water and swam. And I remember learning to be a procrastinator. As mom would say, all right, Mike, come on, let's go home. And I don't recommend any kid do this to mom and dad. But I said, just a minute. <laughs> and I'd go swimming some more. Just a minute, Mama. And of course, you know how mamas are. They're soft touch a lot of time. <laughs> Maybe we got some mamas here. You learn to get to develop some toughness, but my mama's an easy touch. Yeah. If I wanted some, I, all about all, all I had to do was just cry a little bit and say, "I sure would love some of that lemon rain pie." <laughs> <laughs> or, Mama, I sure would love some rice pudding. Or some egg custard pie. Yep. And sure enough, it'd show up. Yep. Yep. How, how far does a toad frog go in the water? Needy. Needy. You know many Christians are just like that? Yep. They're saved, but they just hang around the edges. They're scared to jump in. Yep. Right. You know there's people that claim me for their pastor. They're not members of our church. Yep. So this is my pastor. Yep. <laughs> There are people who claim our church are not members of our church. They just can't get themselves to just jump in. Yeah. And then there are members and visitors who just have no spiritual depth. They've been saved for some time, but they're what you might call spiritual church babies. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. They say, they know they're saved, but that's about all. Yeah. The title of the message is Toad Frog Christians. Yeah. Toad Frog Christians. Are you a Toad Frog Christian? I want to encourage you this morning, go ahead and just jump in. We're Baptists. You know what we Baptists believe in? Yep. After you get saved? Okay. Immersion. Yes, Get in. Amen. 
The water is fine. Amen. I want to give you a few characteristics of what I'm going to call a toad frog Christian. And you can examine yourself today. I have in mind these people that Paul wrote to and said it's the time for you to be teaching. Yeah. And he said, but you're still just knee deep. Knee deep. Yeah. You're just knee deep. Yeah. And he said, I want you. The, the word for that is shallow. Too many Christians are shallow. That's right. I'm not one who believes in the deeper life in the sense that you know you just, you just meditate on the Lord all the time and you never go to church. Yeah. You know, these people say, I'm not going to be a legalist. I'm not going to have anybody put me under a legalism preacher. I'm a deep Christian. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Deeper life Christian. If you're so deep you don't even go to church regularly, you're not as deep as you think you are. Amen. If you're, so, if you're in the deeper life and you don't read your Bible every day, yeah. you're not as deep as you think you are. Right. You're toad frog. Toad frog Christians are shallow. I'll give you a few areas. Number one, toad frog Christians are shallow in doctrine. Mm -hmm. They're shallow in doctrine. That's what uh, the apostle was talking about here in Hebrews chapter 5. In another place, he wrote to the Corinthians and he said, I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. I fed you with milk and not with meat, for hitherto you were not able to bear it, neither yet now are ye able. Yes, they're saved, but they're carnal. Now, I'm not assuming everybody in this congregation is before me today is saved. I'm just saying the needy Christian, I'm not talking about a lost person. But the needy Christian is shallow, so he's really not able to discern much truth from error. He doesn't know the difference between a fundamental preacher and a compromising ecumenical preacher. Yeah. Matter of fact, as far as he's concerned, he couldn't give you a definition about fundamental versus evangelical any more than he could tell the difference between something being uh, boiled or broiled. Yeah. Okay. Fundamental, evangelical, what is that all about? What's all this noise about Bible versions? He's unable to discern truth from error. Yeah. As far as he can tell, Joel Osteen looks so kind. Yeah. <laughs> the only old things that I'll endorse is the one that sells them shrimp. <laughs> yeah. Come on, some of y'all know who I'm talking about. <laughs> you never been to St. Augustine, go there. <laughs> yeah. I'll endorse that old thing. Not their doctrine, of course. I don't know what kind of doctrine they have. But you ought to get to the point to where you know the difference between a solid Bible-believing preacher Amen. and you ought to raise your family to be in the right kind of church. Amen. Somebody said, I decided I don't want to be an independent Baptist. Don't surprise me. You're just one of those needy toad frog Christians. That's right. Grow up! Mm -hmm. Unable to discern truth from error. Unable to divide the word of truth rightly. Do you know you're, in order to be a student of the word of God is not to be ashamed. Do you know what you've got to be able to do? Yep. You've got to be able to rightly divide the word of truth. Mm -hmm. And if you can't rightly divide the word of truth, you're not a student of the word of God at all. Right. Somebody says, what divisions are you talking about? I'm talking about more than the division in the, in the books of the Old Testament and New Testament. Some people think that the, that the Old Testament and New Testament is just the division of the books between Malachi and Matthew. Mm -hmm. But the fact is, if you grow in the Lord and study your Bible, you'll find that there's a division between the time before the cross mm -hmm. and the time after the cross. That's right. That's right. You'll find in the book of Hebrews, and the book of Hebrews will ch tell you in chapter 9, it'll tell you that a testament is not of effect until the death of the testator. Read it sometime. Amen. You'll find that in time, the New Testament begins when Jesus Christ paid for our sins on the cross of Calvary. Amen. But the needy Christian, the toad frog Christian, he doesn't know that. And he's unable to deliver sound doctrine to others. It's very rare these days if you travel much and you're a student of the Word of God. It's very rare to be able to find a church that you can visit along the way mm -hmm. where they rightly divide the word of truth. Amen. Very rare to find a church where they know the difference between Bible versions. Mm -hmm. To where they know the difference between the fundamentals of the faith. 
How are you? Are you shallow? Are you just knee deep? Come on, Toad Frog Christian. How's your Bible read? By the way, you're never going to get strong in doctrine if you don't read your Bible. Amen. I posted a day or two ago, did you read your Bible today? That's elementary. Yeah. You're not going to be a student of the Scripture if you don't read the Scripture. Amen. Come on, where are you at? Need eat. <laughs> Need eat. Mm -hmm. By the time I get this done, you'll have this figured out. Amen. A toad frog Christian is just knee deep. Why don't you just go ahead and get submerged Amen. and just get in there. Thank God. It, it won't drown you. I promise you it won't drown you. Number two, toad frog Christians are shallow in their devotions. A toad frog Christian does not have a quiet time. You listen to me. You listen to me. One of the most important things for you as a believer, as an individual Christian, is to develop what I'm going to call a quiet time Amen. between you and God. Amen. And you may emphasize more of one practice or activity than I do, exercise of faith than I do when you have that, but I'm promising you, you've got to have more in your life than just going to church. That's right. You need to have a walk with God seven days a week. Amen. And one of the best things that's going to help you to have that walk with God is for you to take time by yourself yep. and spend time in prayer Amen. and spend time in the Bible. Amen. Toad frog Christians. Isaiah 64 says in verse 7, There is none that calleth upon thy name that stirreth up himself to take hold of thee. Isaiah 64, 7. I'm praying that God will help you to get stirred up. Some of you men, Amen. women, Amen. boys, girls, if you're saved, I'm trying to get you to get stirred up <clears throat> to spend time with the Lord. Needy Christians don't do that. They're not, listen, and if you want to feel comfortable, some of you that are new in our church or maybe you're new about going to church regularly or whatever, Here's how you can get comfortable if somebody calls on you to pray in church. Some of you may not remember. Did any of you remember what it was like the first time you were called on publicly to pray? Yeah, Amen. That was your first major heart attack, wasn't it? Yeah. Amen. It was rough, wasn't it? Amen. But if you are concerned about that, let me give you a tip. Pray out loud in private. Amen. If you'll pray out loud in private, you'll get in the habit of organizing your thoughts mm -hmm. yeah. just like you would if you were talking to somebody else about something. Right. If all you do is think your prayers, do you know you don't think as clearly as you think you do? No, you don't. Do you know that your thinking may go towards one direction and then, lo and behold, before you know it, you're thinking about something completely different. Yeah. Some of you listen to preaching, and while you're preaching, you're trying to pay attention to what the preacher said, then the next thing you're thinking is what's going to be on some sporting activity on TV <laughs> when you get out of here. Mm -hmm. right. And it's just a thought happened to you. Mm -hmm. You say, well, I don't watch TV. Okay, let me, I'll get you in a moment. <laughs> just give me a minute. <laughs> I'll ring your bell in a moment. <laughs> Maybe it's a restaurant you're about to go to. Uh -oh. and, and the preacher is preaching and saying, Christians need to enlist. Christians need to grow. Christians need to get right. And you're thinking steak, gravy, <laughs> yeah. mushrooms, <laughs> uh -oh. whatever. Uh, it's, I'm just saying that if you don't word it, your mind drifts. Mm -hmm. And so concerning prayer, let me encourage you. Pray out loud. Amen. Amen. Here's a time that might help you. Any of you ever drive in a place other than I-10 and I-95? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You ever get to a place where you can drive for a while and people actually act like they got a brain? Mm -hmm. Amen. And you don't have to think quite as much? That's a good place for you to pray Amen. when you're driving down the old country road. Amen. And if you want to learn to pray so that 
you feel comfortable praying in public. I'm not saying public. It could be when somebody calls on you, you know, just at a family reunion. Mm -hmm. And if they know you're saved, they're sure liable to. Yeah. That's right. And if you're scared about it, want something that'll help you, is the next time you're going down the street. Think of some of the people in our church mm -hmm. and just start naming them all. Amen. You, and you remember something about them? Yeah. You know, say, so dear Lord, I hadn't seen Sister Alice in a long time. Mm -hmm. Please bless her. Amen. strengthen her somebody comes to your mind and you say dear Lord thank you for sister Brenda Amen. please help her legs to do well Amen. dear Lord Mrs. O'Neill's been in aches and pains please help her to put up with her husband Amen. <laughs> but I'm just saying I'm trying to keep your attention but I'm just saying word your prayers out loud Amen. and it'll help you to stay <laughs> Stay organized. Write down a list. Read the list to yourself and to the Lord when you pray. Mm -hmm. Spend some time in prayer. Amen. Spend some time in the Bible. We've got we've got little outline things on the table in the foyer where it'll tell you what to read today if you want to read enough to read once a day and read through the Bible in one year. Amen. And you can do it. Mm -hmm. Some of you have never done it. You can do it if you'll give God 15 minutes. That's right. But some of you don't love God enough to listen to Him for 15 minutes. Yeah. You'll listen to a TV broadcaster. Right. Yeah. You'll listen to a sports broadcaster. Yeah. You'll listen to a news commentator. You'll listen to a comedian. Yeah. Come on, have I hit you yet? <laughs> All right, let me put it where the, where the rubber meets the road. You'll listen more to Chester on gun smoke than you will listen to God in your Bible. That's right. Amen. Right. Amen. Amen. Think on the Bible. Go after souls. Trust God. Pray. That all has to do with you in pride. Amen. Pray for your loved ones, but pray for your church members. Amen. Pray for your neighbors. You've got neighbors who are unsaved. That's right. You've got neighbors who may be in real trouble. Number three, toad frog Christians are shallow, not only in doctrine and devotions, but they're shallow in their dreams. Yeah. Their dreams. What I'm talking about is what they really look for ahead. Yeah. What I'm talking about is what they really want to see happen. Yeah. I'm going to call that your dreams. The Bible says in similar terms to what I'm trying to get across to you. Some of you have heard this. Proverbs 29, 18. Where there is no vision, mm -hmm. the people perish. But he that keepeth the law, happy is he. And there's no doubt in my mind that's talking some about uh, prophets of the Old Testament and not getting a word from the Lord and, and having a revelation from God about what is going to happen to the country, what is going to happen to them uh, individually. No doubt. But there's more to it than that. And I believe that you should have a desire to know God, know Him better, and fulfill His will for your life in this life. Amen. What's your dream? Some people say, my dream, preacher, is to quit hurt. Yeah. I'm talking about some of you older people. Some of you get 50, 60, 70 years old, and you don't have a dream anymore. Mm -hmm. Folks, your life's not over yet. Amen. Serve God until He calls you home. Amen. I really hope and desire that the greatest things in my life as a Christian are not behind me. That's right. Amen. Yeah, amen. Amen. I really pray and desire and dream that the greatest accomplishments in my life as a Christian are yet ahead. Amen. I ain't quit. That's right. Amen. You shouldn't either. Dream on! Yeah. Toad uh, frog Christians, you know what they dream about? Getting enough money to get through the month. Yeah. <clears throat> That's their dream, is if I can just get enough money to make it through all this, I'll be okay! Yeah. Is that all you got going? That's right. right. Young ones, their, their dream is to make children. <laughs> 
and middle-aged ones, their dream is just to make some pleasure for themselves as they get old. Oh, if we can just get this done, we'll be happy. If I can just accomplish this, then we'll be happy. Oh, my friend, there's more to Christian living than the flesh, Amen. than money, yes, than family. Yeah. So many people in Florida are, are centered on those three things. Mm -hmm. That it's hard for, for you to get a church of dedicated people because that's all they're thinking about. I'm, I'm happy pastoring where I believe God wants me to be. But I can't imagine what it's like when somebody comes to a place like this as a pastor when they have been in a place like New York where it's cold or Ohio or Alaska or places like that and move to a place like Key West or Miami or Fort Lauderdale or Orlando. What can it be like for a preacher when everybody's thoughts are about that Mickey Mouse outfit yeah, that's right. in the middle of the state? Don't be shallow in your dreams. Have a real in-depth dream about how God might use you to magnify Jesus Christ. Amen. About how God might do something in your church. About how God might do something with your children. About how God might do something about His calling upon your life. Amen. Amen. Go after souls. Amen. We've got people in this building this morning who you made a definite effort to get somebody here today and they're here. Amen. Live like that till God calls you home. Amen. Don't just try to make it to church and enjoy yourself or endure yourself sure. until yeah. church is over. As the invitation approaches, let me say that Toad Frog Christians are shallow number four in dedication. Mm -hmm. They are observers. They are spectators but it's just hard to get them dedicate themselves to get involved Amen. the Bible says now when Jesus had left speaking he said unto Simon launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a draft Luke chapter 5 verse 4 shout about dedication folks real victory comes when you quit getting scared of that water yeah. and just go ahead and jump in. Mm -hmm. Some of y'all can tell us a tale. Those of you who still remember. You remember what it's like? Anybody, anybody swum in a spring? Mm -hmm. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Spring water is crystal clear and cold as ice. Mm -hmm. Anybody been out there in 65 degree water? Mm -hmm. And it's a disaster if you're going to try to go swimming with somebody one toe at a time. It ain't going to happen. Anybody try to do that? <laughs> Come on, anybody? Is, are, is the memory hitting you again about what it was like? <gasps> and you see these kids are just swimming around, having a good time. You know how they did that? They didn't go in. <laughs> they just jumped in. Amen. Go ahead and do it. You'll live. Yeah. You'll survive. I know the devil will work on you after you've gotten in. Yeah. So you ain't going to make it. The devil talks people out of good decisions that they make. Yeah. Quit being so shy. Amen. Jump in. Amen. Jump in about church membership. Jump in about giving you money and tithes and offerings. Jump in about getting involved in the great commission of the church. Jump in about the music. Just go ahead and enjoy yourself. Yes. Amen. One thing I like about the way that I invite people to come in the choir is every now and then somebody gets, goes ahead and jumps in and has never sung in a choir in all their life. Yeah. You can tell by listening to them, too. They've never been in a choir. <laughs> Isn't it great, though? Don't you like our Amen. choir? Amen. May I sound professional? I like it because the people have decided to just jump in. Amen. God will help me. I want to be all in Amen. until the Lord calls me home. There may come a time in my life physically where I can't do what I did at one time. But I'm going to do what I can. Amen. I want to do what I can while I can.
until the Lord calls me home. Will you stand with me, please, for, for our invitation?